everyone <laughs> welcome back to the service as a tangible experience conversation with your host clementina busaya i'm super excited to be here today because today we have another guest last week we had an incredible session with mr olauto and this week we have another session with <laughs> Mr. Emmanuel Jesuyo Danso. I'm very excited because this session is brought to you by Glorious Wheels Ushering Services. And Glorious Wheels Ushering Services, we are an ushering agency that teaches the business of ushering. We train ushers to be professionals. We also provide ushers for both private, corporate, luxury events. And the beautiful thing about this conversation is that over the years, we have seen that there is a great need for accountability, especially when it comes to the quality and the level of service delivery excellence. That's the reason for this conversation, because the argument is that if service is not tangible and our position is that, yes, service may not be tangible, but service is an experience that can be felt it can be experienced it can be seen and that is why we are having these conversations hi jern hi ej dancer we are so excited last week was mind-blowing and this week my guest is in another time zone and i'm just very excited because we are able to make this work that's why we are bringing it forward and up because we need to um give it a global outlook yes thank you thank you so much thank you Sioma. it's such a pleasure to have you on this call i hope you have been well i hope you are staying safe thank you so much for joining today and if you're just joining us this week it is the service as a tangible experience conversation brought to you by glorious views ushering services glorious views ushering services is an ushering agency that teaches the business of ushering provide ushers for events corporates global luxury and private events we also teach ushers to be professionals one of the things you are guaranteed when you book our ushers for your events is that you are getting an excellent service and yes my guest is here <laughs> good evening sir i know it's good evening in your part of the world <laughs> yes i think the 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 pronunciation is Ko you know what? <laughs> now I've forgotten. I've forgotten what I Konishiwa. Yes. Konishiwa. Konishiwa. Yeah. Konishiwa. Welcome. How do you say welcome? How do you say welcome in Japanese? Yokusu. Hey, Yokusu. I'm going to learn all these languages this by force. I've been doing it and all that. Thank you so much for joining. So last week, we had a guest, and my way of surprising that guest was bringing some other friends on the call. But this week, my way of surprising you is with my glasses. How am I doing? Nice. <laughs> okay. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's giving. <laughs> it's giving everything you should give. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the conversation is making service a tangible experience. So what right. is service without making it relatable to the person that you are serving so i had to show up you know <laughs> thank you everyone for joining yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh my god i feel so i feel so beautiful <laughs> definitely yeah all of you. <laughs> thank you so much. First, I want to say yeah. thank you for the honor of your time. I know you're a very busy person. You're a mathematician. And having to share your time in words is something that is very important. Another thing is that we are in a different time zone. You're supposed to be having your sleep 
by now but you've decided to be here and we do not take it for granted so welcome again yes, everyone you ah, yeah. <laughs> thank you i feel yeah. so honored and blessed yeah. and mm -hmm. in the conversations we've had leading to this time this is the service as a tangible experience conversation and one of the reasons I wanted to have you is because it is focused on global authors and founders all around the world doing what they do and how they've been able to translate what they have, especially the unique things they have into service. And one of the things that stood out to me about you is your combination of mathematics with the ability to write well, which I think it is not common because most times it's either you are very good at maths and you are struggling with English or you are very good at English <laughs> and you are studying with maths but this is you mm. and like my previous guests you have written three books three books yeah. huh? mm. so I want you to please introduce yourself and when, once you have done introducing yourself we are going to move into the conversation about the three books that you have written and how this service as a tangible experience, how you're making things that are intangible in that sense, how you're making them tangible and how you're creating an experience out of them. So welcome, Mr. Emmanuel. Please, can we meet you? Thank you so much. I'm Emmanuel Jason Yonadan. So I'm currently an assistant professor in Sohoku University, uh, Sendai, Japan. Um, I'm a mathematical biologist, but at my core, I'm basically a teacher and an administrator. So I like to I like to simplify complex ideas. I like to put things in order. Anyway, I guess I'm already looking at what's wrong and what can we put in order and all that. So, I mean, you can see that in the sense of, so at my core, I'm a service, I render services. And for me, service is empowering people. Like, you know, people come, they feel helpless, they feel powerless. And then by the time I'm done teaching you, or by the time I'm done, you know, just chatting with you, you are going back empowered, knowing exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for that introduction. So coming, I like the fact that you already kickstarted the, the conversation by saying that what you do is to empower people because after you teach them, they feel empowered. And I can attest to that because sometimes I want to understand something. And for example, I go to YouTube, I type something and a lot of videos come up. But I begin to watch these videos and I find out that there are some that even though they've talked about it i've not gotten anything whereas yeah. there are some other videos that have broken like more confusing yeah. <laughs> exactly they've broken it down yeah. which will bring me back to the mathematical and the writing aspect so the first thing is i want you to tell us the name of your books that you've already written and published and what right. those books are about right. i have a copy of keeping the success piece though so <laughs> take it yeah, away lovely. thanks for that that's lovely yeah so this is keeping success space my very first book it was launched uh to coincide with my 40th birthday in 2022 my birthday is june 1st by the way so this is my first book it basically it basically dissolved my life from when i was born to when i finished my phd program in Tokyo university center japan so it's on amazon wow. it's on seller uh so basically if you want to know about me when you're done reading this book you can you can brag that you, you know me to so, so a very large extent so I mean, my struggles, my background, and all that. Then uh, along the line, uh, you know, I've always had this. When I was in Futa, right? I mean, I was a fellowship boy. I was very active in fellowship. In fact, we attended the same night fest, right? You are in night fest, yeah. Yeah. Night fest with your purpose. Exactly. So you know, I was I was a night fest person, and I just observed. You know, I told you that I, I always like anyway. I guess I like to observe, and I want to see what what can I do to make this place better. So I discovered that you know we had this um, disciple disciple kind of thing going on, or so people mentoring people. And most of the times, I discovered that the ladies got an unfair share of of, of mentoring, or you know, you know, the leaders, especially the guy leaders, they were more interested in the ladies than the brothers. So you see everybody having uh, uh, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter, and I was like, for God's sake, who is taking care of the of the sons? So I so I took that upon myself that yes. Me, I'm the I'm the father of the sons, right? So you mm. see me, you know, you know, interested, intentionally interested in, in the in the guys. Mm. As they are, in fact, some of them because they they even came to put that the ones I, I would know, I'll start, you know, you know, relating with them, like t showing them how to move in life. Instead of taking instead of taking this, a sister to Chicken Republic, I'll take a guy to Chicken Republic to also give them that kind of sense that you know you are important. 
your life can be you can get things together and you don't mm -hmm. have to be a one-sided person so i mean january first this year I, um you know that my wife thank god for good wife right she's been ah! telling me that oh you have something for the boys you have something for the boys so what you know and for me i'm i'm a very i can be very sluggish in the sense that <laughs> until i'm convinced like i see everything figured i do I'm, i don't care so she went out on her own and she sent us questionnaire to the guys they knew were very close to me mm -hmm. asking them what they would like to learn from me and all that so she collected everything and wow. came up with the design and everything so i remember uh, during our ninth wedding anniversary 26 december last year we're traveling from our city sendai to uh fuji city fuji is where the the highest mountain in japan is so in the, wow. in the train we're trying to we're brainstorming like what should we call this group is it real boys league real boys forum real boys that so at the end of the day we ended up with real boys forum and started from wow. january first this year i started writing an article per day wow. so, so and thankfully every weekday since this year started we've not missed one day wow. and well wow. right, when i began to write this article, i said what's the essence of just writing this article and it just goes like that and for me i discovered okay if i can write an article per day for mm -hmm. three months which is 12 weeks i have a book so and that led to wisdom for young men wow series one yeah. yeah so it's also yeah. on amazon it's on i, I mean it's interestingly where well, my my the person who does the the edit the editing is uh what's that thing called now the inside design uh that's yeah. uh, messy alabi she's such a lovely sister so when when she finished uh, doing this she was so impressed that wow so it's like i wrote a book of books sincerely because the book is like 368 pages and that this is just for one quarter yeah 368 pages and it's so here we get to talk about different so i identified 10 areas where if you can have it together because i also believe my best word like i said in the english dictionary is balance you mm -hmm. i don't believe in being spiritually up there and then academically you are a dunce mm -hmm. or you are you are very good academically and socially you are a mess so i believe you can have it all together so the book focuses on 10 different aspects of like academics career fitness finance leadership marriage parenting personal development relationships and spirituality so we get to, wow. so there are, those are the 10 parts with six articles each and from there i discovered the formula that you can write one article every work day of the every weekday mm. but, but after 12 weeks you have a book like basically like well, an article of about 1000 words so second quarter we had young uh, wisdom for young men series two so series wow. three is also ready but i mean we are going to uh, we are going to do start the whole editorial process editing uh graphic design i mean the cover design the inside design and all that for the fourth quarter also i did, i felt that the, the, I'm, 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 i've i've had uh, like it's more like i have three textbooks for young men so i think that should be fine so right i'm writing the fourth one i'm on the fourth one it's like almost halfway and the, the topic is going to be unveiled dramatically like keeping success yeah. case was unveiled so uh, three that's... published two waiting to be to be published wow that's so impressive yeah. three published and two waiting to be i was going to say that one of the things i quickly noticed about your book is that they're usually voluminous like you come firing on all cylinders yeah. and you right. cover it very right. well right. yeah. i know that i've not had the opportunity to read the new two books that's wisdom for young men but i really want to in the presence of everyone i want to say thank you for gifting me those books i know i bought the first one but this yeah. two you actually gave them to me and i'm very very happy and i'm going to read oh, it don't worry i'm going to read it and do a review of the right. book and i mean i've I'm, got i've got um views like it, though it's written for men but i mean you can i swear we I've, 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 for the first time i'm having female followers on facebook who are like oh i know you, you write this thing for men but i'm getting a lot less especially something about parenting there's someone oh. in ghana who is always looking out for the parenting articles wow ah, yeah. i'm happy to hear that you know and it's just interesting how these conversations are coming around my last guest you you will he turned 40 already as had the day wow. of that conversation he was about to turn 40 and he was okay. launching another book after he had written three books and this is you wow. with me today <laughs> so you 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 all of that i can give you my trade secret yeah i can give you my trade secret to make it so easy please please share yeah, <laughs> yeah. Please share. <laughs> yeah. wow that is very very instructive and i'm you know, one of the things i quickly want to draw out from this is that 
somebody saw what you were good at and who is your wife and she took the liberty yeah. to mm -hmm. engage people and ask them what they would like to learn from you and coming down to the mm -hmm. service as a tangible experience conversations one of the things i see is that sometimes we are not sure what to start with but instead of staying in that confused state what i'm hearing you say is just that reach out to people either that you have served or that you know that may be interested in what you have and ask right. them what how do they want to be served and based off of their responses you can create a solution that is tailored to meet that and that is very very instructive because like we, we've been saying that sometimes service is not something that you can lay hold on but what i realized that it would always translate to something mm -hmm. that you can hold on to so thank exactly. you so much and on this call i can see a lot of people rooting for you somebody is saying oh my professor it doesn't come it doesn't come anyhow it comes ready and i agree with that yeah person. it's part of the real boy program like, is my name sick ah. <laughs> yeah. hi you yeah. know it's, it's such a pleasure to meet you no, it's actually I'm... jason you're like me oh yeah oh really <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> that is not a common name what's the meaning yeah i mean Jesus is good. Really? Wow, that's yeah. nice. Now yeah. I know. Yeah. Now I know. What's the origin of the name? It's an Ogu name. Jesus is Jesus. Jesus. You know, once you hear you know, anything, you know, that's good. Like, our daughter is Mao, your God is good. Ah, oh, now I see. Yeah, I learned so everything. Uh, I mean, where you uh, can find those people, even in the Republic of Benin and all those places. Wow. Thank you for sharing yeah. that, which will bring me to the work you do in the Boys Forum. I know that you've spoken to the fact that you, when you were in school, you saw that the ladies were getting the attention and you wanted to mm -hmm. be that person to give the male child attention. I would uh, right. come in, into that line a bit to say that, why do you think it is important for us to focus on the male child? And I will say this, I have a friend, or I know somebody, his name is Solomon Ayodele. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I follow him very, very closely is because of his heart for the boy child. In fact, I remember the first time he randomly read out to me, was just like, ah, LOCs, please, we are having this event. I'm like, please, I'm there already. I showed up because wow. I believe, this is my belief, I believe that. A lot of the issues we have to treat with the girl child will not be there mm -hmm. if the guys are properly raised. So I want you to speak My to answer. that because, please, let me just yeah. say this one more thing. Because, <laughs> and you share a lot of similarity with my previous guests, which I did not know. This is really unplanned. The, 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 schedules, yes. the schedules are planned, but the guests are not really planned because of the timing. Yeah. And I must say this, one of mm -hmm. the things he did was that he, he did a series on men, and he was saying, he was yeah. challenging the stereotypes of things like men should not cry, men should not apologize, men right. should not... And, and he was saying about... Strong. Yes, the yeah. mixed feeling. So I want you to take us through that conversation mm -hmm. in light of service as a tangible experience. Because come to think of it, a good old rest on both the male and the female. So let's talk about it. Why do you think it's important for guys to be built up? And how are you showing up in that space? Okay. So like I told you earlier, right? For me, service is all about empowerment. Now you have focused on all the ladies. You have empowered them. They know how to serve their husbands. They know how to do the right things. They know how to be there as a wife, as a mother, and everything. But then he's, she's married to a guy who did not get that empowered, and then mm -hmm. they struggle. So she's doing all the, she's doing, she's making all the efforts. But the guy, even if, if with a sincere heart, you know, some people are sincerely wrong. Like they, they, they want to be right, but they don't know how to be right because That's nobody true. actually showed them how to do it. So you are, you are actually wasting your time if you are, you are raising all the... Everybody deserves attention, to be very clear. Mm -hmm. It's not like, focus on the boys, forget the ladies. No. As the girls are getting attention, the, girl, the guys should also get equal attention. So as you're mm -hmm. empowering the ladies, service is empowerment. Like, that's, what, that's my core. That's my, that's my talking point in this conversation. Service is all about empowering people, maybe with information, uh, the next step to take and things like that. So as you do that for the ladies, do that for the guys, so, so that when they meet, they are both empowered. They already know how the, the guy knows how to how to treat a lady. The lady already knows how to treat a man, and everything works so smoothly. 
and you know from there i i before i even started this re, uh, real boys forum thing right before for me to have that confidence I, I i experimented with two or three people i'm sure you know one or two of them like one of them is currently in russia you know i so that was someone who, at some some point he had he was having a whole lot of trouble at home so every time the mother would just call hey pastor down to i'm going to shake him come like it is was such a trouble right and so I, I somehow in my heart the first time i, I think i met him before i passed him from youth service in 2012 so immediately i saw him i just i was just like this is a project for me mm. you know so from there i became friendly with him i i did it, i made it comfortable that's why i'm always for me i'm like the gen z guy like i i want i'm very interested in the gen z so i see people bashing them like they are busy and that for me I, if I have a church today, I'm going, I'm going to be more like a Gen Z pastor, so to speak. Like, I feel that they need all the attention they can get. Instead of all the bashing, they have their, they have, they are very, they are creative people. They have all these things going for them. They just need to be channeled in the right direction. Instead of all the bashing, of which I've seen this generational thing, like, oh, uh, this new generation. We are right. Your own parents did you the same thing. So at the end of the day, I discovered no generation is really better than the other. Fact. The only thing is that we need to synergize, we need to shake hands across generations and learn from ourselves so that we can have a best a balanced society. The, I am a millennial. Our generation is not better than the generation of this part. The, our parents are not better than us. Yeah, we, we can imagine. So we just like demonizing the lower generation. We have this self righteous attitude. Whereas when we're like them, our parents treated us the same. So I mean, I feel all those things are really baseless. Mm. So I have like, I think I have two. I have at least two. Uh, let me say I have like three people, and I, I'm going to quickly run through this. We have told you about the first one. You mm -hmm. know, the mother was always like, "Oh, uh, your 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 boy has started the game. He's doing this. He's doing that." So I, I I one thing one thing about discipling young people or mentoring, if you like, is to make them comfortable with you. Like let them be, let them be able to trust you to the point that the first time they are citing a date. Like you, you are even comfortable to tell them. Yeah. So sometimes some of them, like, it is me that I, I wouldn't want asking about that guy Alpha, that big where I see you. The big Alpha, <laughs> Alpha, Alpha. Imagine that kind of thing. So they are so comfortable to talk to me yeah. about things that now probably they will not be able to discuss with their own parents or things like that. So mm -hmm. and because they are that comfortable, and I'll be like, actually, they be fine, but if you do want to, it will not make sense. And mm -hmm. you know that way, it's. You know they are able to tell me so and that we have seen people who who had no direction who had no who are he did not know the way to go all of it like the person in russia I'm, I'm very confident like he's okay like he has got to that point i, I could not trust him to make his judgment so when they come at first it's all of course in as much as i draw them close when they came when they come very close they see the, a very harsh side of me because at that point in time it's more like you are rough you need to be sharpened and the mm -hmm. process is not easy. After some time, everything becomes easy because I've now said, oh, this person is not responsible. This person cannot make decisions for themselves. Now, the, 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 another person I like to talk about, I won't mention their names so that they won't be embarrassed. Another person is th this one, it, it, my teacher in secondary school, I attended by the drama school, by the way, one of the best schools you can ever think of. I don't know, but I hope it's still like that now, you know? So I attended by the drama school. So my English, one of my English teachers back then introduced, was teach, teaching in another school. And discovered this guy who was re really doing excellent and introduced him to me that oh this is your boy I, in fact that woman deserves an award she has she has connected with two people like that now and very promising people so once she hands them over to me i take over from there so this guy we just started so he just was out of secondary school and so i'll give him questions like in different areas of mathematics and the guy was so good that I'll give him very hard things. Before you know it, like I give him in the morning, in the next one hour, he's answered the question and all that. So he, by the time he gained that, interestingly, he gained admission to Futa. When he gained admission, his mother like was crying, like, where are we going to get more? So admission is supposed to be a thing of joy, right? But because there was no mm -hmm. money, right? It was such a thing. I'm like, see, guy, I, you can see where I'm coming from. So I'm keeping success with You already know the kind of place I'm coming from. So like, I had to literally walk my way through how to fund school and things like that. Thank God for scholarships that made things pretty easy. So I got admission into Futa. Funnily, by the time we was coming to Futa, I that was when I came to Japan. So I didn't see him at all. So but then oh. we kept on 
we get on talking like we're talking online for the most part. So I'm um, one good thing about this guy. Before he took any step, he would be like, Ah, sir, I want to do this. Well, how should I how should I go about it? So he became academic coordinator in 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 CCF nine that and then also and it went on like that. And thankfully after my PhD as a patriotic Nigerian, I went back, you know, and <laughs> thank so for me, that time was it it, it, it was really a it was mm. somehow like some people were like, How do you go to Japan and return to Akure to Akuta? I'm like, yeah, that was that's that's what I I did it. It was intentional. Thankfully, if I did not return, probably I wouldn't have been able to publish um, Keeping Success Please. Wow. Because I, I was on it. For that disciplined person that puts everything together, you know, made sure the book came out. She put me on my toes. Anything I needed to write to put it right to make sure things are going on so it was my coming back to nigeria that made that possible so my, my coming back to nigeria that made me meet to see this guy i've been discipling or mentoring on online for the first and face to face in fact i was like okay just come and leave here because i was i came back alone my, my family was here in japan so i came back alone so i was just like okay and of course there's this principle i learned from pastor Shea. you know pastor Shea now so yeah this yeah. lesson i learned from him as a man right he wants to be you want your moderation to be known to all men. You don't want to be seen in shady situations. So, <laughs> if I, so that's why if he's traveling, he's traveling with another man. So if you, if you now come and tell him that, oh, we saw Pastor in one hotel, he would be like, oh yeah, well, we went there together. So I learned, I really learned that from him. So since I knew my family was not around, you know, mm -hmm. I, I just took all the boys in. Like so it was more like a boys hotel. So I just do have boys. This will cook, do everything we have to do together. And all that. Mm. So I mean, maybe I'll just stop with those. It looks like I'm, I'm taking too much time already. So I have <laughs> practical experiences like that. So interesting. That guy graduated from Kusa with four point nine six over five point zero zero. Wow. And I don't know. He should. I don't know how Kusa is going to do it. Maybe it's going to be one of the people reading the speech for the next convocation in Kusa. You should. I mean that. Because so that's the with results like that. Exactly. With results like that, I now became confident that okay. So I have these practical people. I've done I, like over a space of like ten years. I've seen people's life transformed. Mm -hmm. People who were like at the rock bottom. The Russia guy was lost. He was at the rock bottom, and then I came and blah blah blah. Wow. So, I, so having seen that, right, I, I became confident that okay, I can scale this up and take it to a bigger uh, place. So RBF in RBF now we're like smaller than a bit over like smaller than twenty people. You know, actively engaging, discussing these issues, how to treat women, how to Wow. How to be a real man? Being a real man is not about muscles or blowing uh -huh. your wife. No, it's actually about being able to uh -huh. go to the kitchen and do the dishes uh -huh. and not feeling that uh -huh. your ego is at stake. Uh -huh. yeah. um, wow! Um, wow! Yeah. Thank you so much for saying that. And let me quickly say that the pillars for service I hear you say is number one connection. Like connection is Definitely. important to service for you to really right. deliver excellent service. You have to be able to connect with the people you're delivering yeah. this service to another thing mm -hmm. i hear you say is trust is important to trust like so, if people cannot trust you to deliver that service and that was that was what i heard when you talked about the woman that would say oh this is now your son now or this is now your but it's yeah. because she trusts you and um mm -hmm. the last thing i wrote here is checking in that for you to be able to measure what is actually happening you have to have a way of checking yeah. in like an accountability process to mm -hmm. say, oh, we've done this. We've touched the road from yeah. this point to this point. How many did they increase the number of cars that has touched that that has used that road? And just you know, right. just bringing it to what we do as a business. What I'm saying is that for us to even deliver excellent service, it's not just enough to like take a customer's booking and say, oh, we show up. Like we really have to know what is important to that customer for that event, and that's where connection comes in because you are never going to get to the inside gist if you have not connected with that person. And mm -hmm. I, you you have not said a lot of things. <laughs> I'm trying not to repeat what you're saying, but. <laughs> Right. this is so empowering and you keep repeating the word mm -hmm. empowering and one of the things you said which i'm going to bring up in, in this conversation is that you said that service is about an holistic experience that right. means you right. thought about the experience so our previous guest said mm -hmm. service is planned 
that means for you to deliver excellent service you have to have planned it out it doesn't matter if you have customers or not you have to have thought about it how do i want my clients to feel or how do i want the person using this particular product to feel and you came back to say that service has to be holistic that means from the point of starting to the point of end, like ending whatever you're doing or to the goal you want to achieve can you shed more light on that and can you just um shed more light on that as we take talk about so you've talked about connection trust checking in and accountability that's those are the words i i give to it so i will mm -hmm. allow you explain what holistic means in service as a tangible experience or a wow or exceptional service experience for you yeah the example that keep, that kept in, uh, coming to my head when you're talking about the holistic thing is uh, you know, I've told you those about like practical people have mentored over the years. So it reminds me of my of my time in school a lot that you know I'm in class, right? So I carry the same attitude that okay, especially teaching a course like mathematics that everybody finds to be uh, very difficult, and people have there's definitely a word like mask trauma, mask phobia. So those things are real. Mask phobia, mask. People have mask trauma. Once they see numbers, they are like they are already G three. So, but it's can thing, never one be thing, me. Well, <laughs> that would be the reaction. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, but one thing God has nothing to do is, I mean, I also have somebody, interestingly, who, when I, it was, when I came back from service, I met him in church in PGT. So, he had carried, he's a very popular person. I just don't want to embarrass him there. <laughs> so, he, he came back to, so he had, as I, as I, as I, as I, met, I think he had carried MTS 101. That, that's like the simply basis mathematics course mm -hmm. in the university in Puta, right? So he had carried the course for like three times. So and when he told me that oh mass is this, mass is that I'm like, guy, yeah, calm down. Because for me, I've done I've done my observation, having had very good teachers from the very beginning of my life, you know, I discovered that the big biggest problem with math is teachers. People don't have inspiring teachers. So I just mm -hmm. call this guy that guy yeah, from this thing that you're talking about, it's all about knowing the principle. It's not hard. Then I, so I started engaging like maybe once or twice a week. I will teach, I'll just sit him down and take a topic, explain it to him like it's nothing. And then guess what? After like one or two months, he started teaching tutorials to his friends in his class. Wow. Practical. Yes. And by the time he wrote the course again, he got an A. And from then on, that idea, that idea spread to other parts of his studies. And by the time I was graduating from Futa, he was the guy said as the most I think the most improved students in this class or something like that. I, I think there's something around that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean it's someone I can tell you his name privately. I don't want to embarrass him on social media because he's a he's a celeb. That's fine. <laughs> that's yeah, fine. Yeah. So wow. you know so so that that's 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 the whole idea, right? Like these things are the core, they are basic principles. So most times I go to class, I introduce I should introduce myself and coming from being Ugu, right? Or erroneously called Ego. And people even take Ego to be an abuse. So I get to class. One of the first things I do is, okay, my name is Emmanuel Jason Yondan. So what do you think about this name? People will be like, oh, it's strange. It's this, it's that. But people that know the, the name already, maybe there are some Badagi people in class and they're like, okay, it's an Ego name. And I'll be like, okay, yeah. What do you think of, what do you know about Ego people, so to speak? And they'll be like, oh, they are, they are dead sea. And I'll be like, am I dead too? They'll say no. Now they have this, they have many children. And I'm like, my parents have only three children. I mean four children. And they're wow. like, I'll be like, is that too many? And they'll say no. Okay. Then number three, they'll be like, they cannot speak Yoruba. Mm -hmm. They cannot speak Yoruba. I'll be like, well, no, I can speak Yoruba, but who made speaking Yoruba a license for anything? Who cares? I mean, you have your Yoruba is your language. It doesn't have to be my language, it doesn't have to be. So if, mm. if you see me as an educator speaking Yoruba uh, in some way that you think is strange, it's your business. Now you speak my Ugu uh, <laughs> in that same way. You can't. So I have an mm. advantage about it. I can speak your language. No matter what you think about how I speak it, I can speak mm. your language. I have mine. So, and the more languages you can speak, I mean, there, I think there's, there's a research about the more languages you can speak, the more you can. You have a better, the better world view you have. Fact. So, I mean, so by the time I, I am done debunking all those things, and I now teach them math, and they'll be like, wow, this guy is actually a great teacher. I know someone who is also a big girl these days, like a big tech sister. When she came to church at first, she didn't rate me at all. Like, because my uh, elder sister told her, yeah, my elder sister told her about me. She was, she, was, she didn't, she was like, mm. 
like okay she would not greet Misha as an elder so interestingly she, she got into Kuta so I, I went to teach I remember the course I went to teach was trigonometry so I, after that class from that day if she saw me she would she gave me special regard like special, very special regard so because she was like wow hey so I was like teaching trigonometry is simply three angle measurement it's all about triangle so I'll, I'll start like that like trigonometry three gonometry three is three gono is angle metry is measurement so it's, it's three angle measurement so that takes us to the idea of triangles right so now wow. distinguish between all the types of triangles uh, ang uh angle uh two types of triangles right you can classify triangles based on the num the, the kind of size they have whether mm -hmm. it is um it, it, it's I lateral I yeah. flat, or scaling I based on that. they can classify mm -hmm. based on angles maybe it is acute angle triangle uh, reflex angle triangles and all of that you know so right angle. It, by the time i was done she does she does fall like eh, you know so from there so when they see you like that they want to come close and when they come mm -hmm. close then they get very comfortable to even share other maybe where they have these struggles like i've had to pay uh, to to balance of people's school fees you know some people are in class they, they will even concentrate you know though you have been a good teacher but they won't concentrate because they have issues from home you know mm. so from by by delivering excellent service in teaching and being vulnerable to so people relate with them i remember many times they put that you remember me and my bag i might go and check my latest facebook profile some people have thought with me that this is your background i don't care like it doesn't it's i mean it makes my life easy so many i i, I remember a day in Futa, i was going out I, I carried my bag as usual i didn't have a car i was just walking and once again mm. i was like teacher don't come back like sometimes i get lost in the midst of the student because i'm just like part of them but i don't care right because at, at the end of the month who gets salary it's not you the students me whether i think i'm a student or not i'm sure mm. later, i don't care so because of that friendliness so they're able to come around and they mm. tell you about their family about their spiritual life mm. and things like that and you know so by delivering excellent service they want to come and get more even beyond academics they mm. want to come and learn about life so i've had some of my students on to long-term friends so they don't have to tell me about their job their marriage okay they are saying one yellow is it okay mm. should i go on you know things like that so at the end of the day everything comes together so one expense service leads to uh, excellence in other areas especially if you have multiple capacity to handle those things i have a sentence to talk too much as a teacher you know <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. This is even a this is a lot of learning, and I'm happy that you brought us here. And I'm going to also give you a little bit of break if you really need to drink water, because and I say that because I'm also um, trying to let people know that if they need to ask questions, they can use the right. question button on Instagram. The conversation is service as a tangible experience and we have ex been exploring this in different sectors and area my guest today is no other than professor jason yoda so he's an author he's a three times published author <laughs> and he has some two other books in the works and one of the things i've heard you say here is that service is about being relatable and i think we wanted to share an experience before i even come down to the final questions while we take other people's question I remember that I've I've lost quite a number of Instagram accounts and I remember that there was even a time that my big thing was that I, I just like a clean account. You know, there are these accounts you will see everywhere is white, he has these borderlines and everything is so set. And one of those days, I'll be very honest, I was looking at this Instagram account, which is supposed to be my account, but I did not feel any joy because I kept feeling wow. that life is not really perfect. So, mm. but mm. I, I, I even say it as a quote, like life, life doesn't have to be perfect, but your Instagram feed mm. can be perfect, which is completely okay. But I told myself right. that if something is a reflection of me, mm -hmm. then there should be that aspect of the mess or things that are not right. completely okay. And I say this because mm -hmm. in delivering excellent service, a lot of time we get into the cross of perfection versus excellence especially mm -hmm. when you're looking at other people who may have been there before you who may have mm -hmm. more resources and you're looking at it and you know one of the things you said you you use the word inspiring teachers and when right. you said that one of the things i heard is that 
you can make a subject aspirational but you cannot right. make it aspirational without inspiring people which so, means that starting with what you have where you are is more important that than wanting to make it perfect and i think this is right. i would want to call it the should i say the challenge of delivering excellent service because sometimes mm -hmm. we come into the conclusion that if it's not perfect like if all the right. angles are not checked if the box is not sparkling mm -hmm. then it is not excellent or it is right. not worthy which is not true it can be excellent but it doesn't necessarily need to be perfect and the basis right. for measuring that excellence what i hear you say is that it's being relatable so for example i don't want to have my plate of food in i, I no let me say it i don't i would re, rather prefer if i want to eat maybe local or further rice there's something mm -hmm. about eating it in leaf that if you're yeah. putting it in plate <laughs> it's not yeah, it's not, I, I it won't give the it's right not, advice. <laughs> it's not fulfilling yeah. that adjustment. Then sometimes combination mm -hmm. of will when you say amala and the way do it is amala and the way mm -hmm. do once you start making amala and therefore mm, yeah. it's, it's not because <laughs> it's not good, but because mm -hmm. there is it's, it's, and even it's defined. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so mm -hmm. and even at that, you can even create the Amala and effort, but maybe with a twist yeah. or something. So I really mm -hmm. want to say thank you for sh sh sharing that because you, you already said with that service is being relatable. And another thing I wanted to quickly point out is that you said that there will be people that won't rate you, but as you grow and your results shows, yeah. they will come around. Mm -hmm. And please, I even Definitely. really want to say this to people in my line of business ushering right. agency event services like there is nothing mm -hmm. wrong in admiring big businesses that has gone ahead but the beautiful so, thing is that the, when you start there will be people that will not reach you they will not mm -hmm. like they will not buy right. and there is mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that that that's what i hear so, you say there's nothing wrong with that but as you continue to grow and you put in the work and as your results mm -hmm. shows some of right. them if, if not all will come around and even if they don't buy for you you'll be surprised from you you'll be surprised that they may be willing to recommend you and it won't take their Definitely. name for you to get into places that you yeah. may not have access to and that is so empowering i want to really say thank you because when you started this conversation you started by saying service is empowering but yeah. even the conversation we are having like I, I can see the empowerment the conversation is giving because it's not about mm -hmm. perfection. It's about understanding the journey yeah. you are on, making it relatable mm -hmm. and growing while at it. And that right. will bring me to the, we, we are almost concluding the session because we are almost into an hour. We are 45 minutes into the okay. conversation. I just yeah. wanted to know, like, so when we say service as a tangible experience, what so i've been hacking around um, and if anyone is watching this even if you're catching the replay please do me a favor there is a link in the bio of this um, conversation that is that service as a wow experience and what we are trying to do is to know and understand if people have gotten excellent service and why they considered that service excellent when they got it so from your own point of view i want you to share with us that time that you got a service that was so 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 nice that till now you have not forgotten it that's why you are sharing it now like that service just uh, stood out to you and the the element of that service that made it such an unforgettable and beautiful experience so if you could share that would really 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 be amazing now that's a difficult one. Uh, I have to think a bit about that. But I me, mean, you know, if you've been to Japan, you will understand service. Like because people they go the extra mile to like even if it's just a plate or a cup, a bottle of water you want to buy, the smile. Will be So I'm trying to of a particular situation. And I think I would really like to get an example in Nigeria too. I'm trying to think. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be 
Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. The, the internet was somewhat breaking. So it oh, doesn't okay. have to be a Nigerian yeah. example. It doesn't, so you're already on track with what you said about J yeah. Japan and going the extra mile. I just wanted you to put like the element of what made it exceptional for you. Like, was it in the packaging? Was it in the content? Was it in how you felt? So it doesn't have to be one particular experience, but something about maybe any of those or that particular experience that made it like, you know, this is something that I've experienced and I want to pass on to another person. So you you could take what you said again because at some point you were frozen okay. and I wasn't sure I even heard you myself. Yeah. Even after you said all this, right, I still find it difficult to pinpoint a particular example. But I mean, maybe I'll, I'll use, I'll just use a national example. You know, Japan, the, I think at the core of what happens in Japan is how valuable one person is. One person. It's, you know, in some places, they don't care, like, if you're not a VIP, they, they, they don't care about you. But here, as far as you're a human being, you get the, that respect you deserve. So, as a service provider, right, you want to see every customer, or as a teacher, like, you want to see every student you teach as a very important person. You see, even if only one student is remaining, you want to, you want to still give all the passion, all the energy you will give when you have, when you have, like, 20 people in the class. Or like maybe you're a pastor, you want to preach to one person with all the. I mean, somebody like Pastor Udi, like you know, and I, I mean, if you've shared your experience before, like he would, he would, he would teach you only one, mm. only you, like he's teaching one million people because he knows that it is sowing a seed. I think, I, I mean, I, I, there may not be able to point a particular example, but looking at the example of uh, of Japan, the extent to which people go to to give you whatever you want to whatever service sometimes even if it's free service they don't treat you like trash because they are, they are even rendering you to free service because mm -hmm. you are very important as a human being like that thank you for sharing that no no yeah. you did service is about humanity mm -hmm. that's all i heard you yeah. say like and exactly. the earlier we begin to know that not because of titles it, you you've just said it all. You've just said it all. I I don't want to further break down what you say, but I can I can because so think about it that um the, recently I was even online and I was seeing this conversation about maybe somebody trying to attend a party and they did not allow the person go in and I was trying to really understand mm -hmm. what the problem is and I felt like the problem is not even in either allowing the person in or um telling the yeah. person to leave is how you actually made the person how? feel because okay. how you can still tell me yes but i know that i'm not mm -hmm. welcomed and exactly. you can tell me no I and i'm very and grateful so and even yeah. for the yeah. friendship mm -hmm. from there like yeah. so you yeah. said it that at the core of excellent yeah. service is humanity treating human beings yeah. as human knowing that everybody is important knowing that people People are human beings, and either they have a celebrity status or not, right. should not, not determine how well mm -hmm. we treat people. So, so you answered the question excellently. Sorry. At this point, with what you said, with what you said I, I remember a particular example. So sorry, with what you said, okay. I have helped me to remember an example. You know, I'm also I'm, I'm also a researcher, right? Apart from publishing this kind of books, I, pu I publish um, uh, papers in mathematics, like I'm an applied mathematician a mathematical biologist i use maths to make sense of the, uh, the spread of diseases the spread uh, then in uh, ecological interaction and even social interaction so i think i have like at, at least 20 papers published in the academics right but and one experience we get is that in the process of publishing your paper right you, when you submit your paper to a journal they give it to reviewers and when they give it to reviewers they will look through and they'll be like okay yeah you didn't do this right i mean this is very good but why not did you why didn't you consider this why didn't you consider that and then the report will come back to you now the time like I, I, my first paper i ever published it went smoothly so it was so nice the second paper i was going to publish the reviewers they, they i mean they, i was so bashed by the reviewers that I, I i i was i lost it like i don't know how to explain it I, I i wasn't myself until i went to church on sunday and slept lie down on the floor before i regained my composure it mm. was so bad so mm. you know some reviewers can come like that. they are so harsh they are so brutal and everything 
But I remember this particular experience. There's this journal called called Chaos. Uh, you know, I've been to non-linear dynamics like mathematics. We talk about chaos. We try to understand chaos so we can have order, right? So yeah, I submitted my paper. The dream. One of my papers for my PhD experience, for my PhD studies. I submitted this paper to this chaos uh, journal. My, the paper was not accepted, but the way they delivered the rejection message, I was so happy. Mm-hmm. So after that time, I, 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 now I review for the journal. Like they didn't accept my paper, but I review paper mm-hmm. papers for them because of the way they treated me. Though it was mm-hmm. a reject, so that experience you, you shared actually helped us remember this. That even mm-hmm. if you are turning people down, do it so that they still have their dignity intact, or in fact, mm-hmm. their dignity raised if possible. So, so, so I may not be able to help you, but I should let you know that yes. So I'm not able to help you, but you are okay. You can get a better thing here or something like that. So, I mean, that I, I couldn't imagine that this is to be about a publication in mass that this example will come from. Uh, <laughs> ah, yeah. you see, because mm-hmm. service is actually in everything we do, and right. that mm-hmm. takes the conversation back to the fact that whichever divide we choose to go, like. I'm not even trying to find the line to say, oh, service is tangible or intangible. All we are saying is that it can be seen, it can be felt, it can be experienced. And at the core of of that is how we actually deliver those experiences. So the outcome is not really what is important. Of course, the outcome is part of it. It would have been good if your journal was accepted, but there would even have been no way you would have improved like and i'm sure that Mm -hmm. that's that's that rejection has even modeled a will for you that if you wanted to turn down people's paper you would do it in that they know that oh this is what i've done wrong this is what i can do better not just Mm -hmm. that you are turning down the paper to say oh did you not think about this process and even if we are setting the paper Mm -hmm. you would still be able to say oh maybe for future um, papers you may want to consider mm-hmm. this point of view this perspective and all right. of that and you just yeah. said it all i have sensei saying that professor doing his teen and in his element and i can agree that That's this conversation you, I you, bro. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> honestly i i when i was looking at the mathematical part of you i wasn't sure how the conversation was going to go but like i said to mm-hmm. you while we were off the call i this week you know that and i believe that that's how god also works i found this designer mm-hmm. who loves mathematics so much and loves fashion so much and the only way yeah. she could marry me so she could not choose one or the other so it's mm-hmm. okay if you cannot choose one or the other you can start by combining like your two unique strengths and she combined a yeah. love for math into fashion and with that she creates designs and just watching her i could see that if you make a dimension of i'm just throwing this number up like let's say nine over ten of black and white design it can come out mm-hmm. as a diagonal line and if you like do that. like 12 over 10 like it comes out a mm-hmm. completely different design even though you are using right. the same color and i was just like wow like this makes a lot of sense this is my cue that this conversation is going to make mm-hmm. a lot of sense and i really want to say yeah. thank you I, i've checked the question box there's no question for you so far i want to say thank you and i want to take any final word you may have for us if you also want to shout out to everybody like your community actually came they came to share you up on this yeah. call and i don't take you for granted and another thing yeah. i also want you to speak to is where we can find your books how we can find you online and if there's any project you're you working on youtube anything you want us to subscribe to please share with us so that when we catch this video watching it live or in the replay we can know where to find you so over to oh. you sir um, okay i mean you you you, you gave me another talking point in maths, right? Talking about combining maths with things. I've seen practical examples, like you just talked about a fashion designer who uses maths to do her designs. Then I also, I mean, I've also come across this guy in Kenya. He's a barber. So you see him, when he wants to cut your hair, he'll come out with, he'll bring compass, set squares, all this uh, maths wow. kind of thing. And then you see him drawing a line, you know, carving us an angle. I've been drawing an arc, you know, and by the time he's done, everything is just perfectly on Perfect. so that so, yeah so we have fashion design and mathematics right now we have fashion a uh, fashion design and c- cutting hair and uh, you know uh, a barber Mat- then i i, I was going to, be, I was going to be, exactly so there's math- 
smart school everything in fact so i was going through facebook uh, uh, during this week uh the first phd the first single phd student from math department in um i think Faisal Army university of education of the state i mean i saw a post like that the first lady to get phd in math there so at the same time the her supervisor is actually the current commissioner of education in the state so the, mm. the man is a professor and his son also graduated from math now the son loves math the son loves music so he ended up doing how to uh, ended up combining math and music in such a way that he came up probably came up with a method to teach math using music so there's wow. a whole lot of combination yes so then currently i, I started i mean I, I studied mathematical biology right in the general and mathematical modeling basically so we can model anything so mm -hmm. so by everything i did on my phd is more like mathematical biology mathematical sociology that's how information spreads social interactions and these data to work with even lingu linguists mm -hmm. using my maths in their in their stuff currently i just started a project with a very dear friend he's a psychologist i'm a mathematician so we are working on resilience you know in, in real, real boys for a one of the one of the talking points is resilience because i've discovered that in re re resilience is more important than intelligence yes you know you can have somebody who finishes the first class and then you have somebody with a third class who is doing better mm -hmm. in life than them just because they have learned how to fail and rise up again mm -hmm. so there are many intelligent people they cannot once they fail once they are they are done for that, so now that resilience is more important than intelligence so like that so now we are we are trying to model resilience so you, you bring the psychological ideas and for me as a mathematician i just take these ideas you know use my math mind like translate it to equations and then solve the problem and then the result interpreted back in psychology so mathematical mm -hmm. psychology so you can have mathematical anything so i'm wow. about where to find me I'm, I'm on all the platforms i'm on facebook for my, with my full name emmanuel just so mm -hmm. interestingly i okay i'm also on instagram of course obviously because i'm here now interestingly do you know that the first time i I was, I, I have, I, I, I was this person who was, I tried to avoid as many social media platforms as possible. So Instagram was one I avoided so much. The first time I got on Instagram was because of something like this. But oh. you know, my he, he, he released oh. this book about immigrants in America, right? So yeah. we're, so we're having a chat like this. That was, it was, it was my uncle that brought me to Instagram because I was Are avoiding you Instagram all the Imagine. Yeah, because I thought Mama, Instagram was for some people who was... just like to show their fine faces. I see you. You was on yeah. our entrepreneur summit on the author's yeah. wing of that summit. Iman yeah. Crystal, that's wow. that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> exactly, we're having my in our next Real Boys Forum virtual meetup. We are discussing is is spiritual uh, is the spirituality spirituality really matter? You know, does spirituality really matter? So it's it's going to be our now. Our my party. mind is almost event. leaving because I know girls are not invited into that forum. Yeah, but, but it's fine. Uh, well done. Be Girls are, are are girls are welcome we already really? ready the ladies are welcome yeah see go oh, and see our latest flyer because in the last oh, uh, meet of we, dis we discussed parenting the, the, the mm -hmm. second to the last we discussed parenting the last one we discussed how to start a lasting marital relationship so girls are always welcome so we ah, try to put that in because people, you. People, they will think that it is good for boys girls are always welcome ah, okay and the ladies joined. are always welcome yeah. <laughs> Exactly. thank you for so the invite so the flyer should be out there yeah i mean by next week or so it should be out so then about where to find me just set with my full name um facebook well i would think facebook is my strongest place for now <laughs> then i'm on twitter at ej then maybe i can type all that um okay i mean find me with my full name on all the platforms find that's, me that's fine my <laughs> full name that's everywhere maybe I everywhere so that emmanuel just in your dance okay so uh, like okay. It, so well, one of the biggest things that happened this year is that i started a youtube channel because mm -hmm. i mean when i when i came back to japan i started getting a lot of requests from all over the world like people in canada uh, sweden everywhere they just want me to teach math uk so i have students in all of these places so i'm like sometimes it's this i don't have time to always do that i can just refer them to my video but you see the trouble is that people just want you to teach them so in that case i can now build them and without mercy and you'll be fine because i gave you option yeah so for every service i render i have a free option for you for instance, mm. i can show you this, that's what i want to do for you i can show you how to do it but if you now choose that you still want me to do it then mm. it's okay. <laughs> like, mm. so, you have, so i can charge you without having mercy without caring 
so much about um, how you feel because I already gave you a free option. For everything I do, I have a free option. If you cannot do that, then you have to face it for, for my time, uh, basically. Yeah. Uh, thank you yeah. for your generosity. And this part you just said reminded me of what my coach will say about the fact that if somebody's free content doesn't provide the type of experience you have, then that's an indication mm -hmm. that the paid experience may not be exceptional. Exactly. And yeah. it just seals up this conversation in a nice way that when you're mm -hmm. looking to provide service as a tangible experience, even with your free options, don't like mm -hmm. we've already established that at the core of service is humanity. Don't do it like because right. it's free, then add the any awareness mm -hmm. and keep the um, good experience to the paid one. The free should yeah. be as of as much good quality as the mm -hmm. paid one. And I want to say Thank you, sir, for coming on the conversation, service as a right. tangible experience, for yeah. allowing the beautiful people of Glorious Wheels of Free Services to share in your time. And I want to say thank you. We do not take for granted the gift of your time, and we wish you all the best in your journey. Thank and you. we look forward to your two books, your new two books coming up. Yeah. I mm -hmm. can't wait. Yeah, I've already like read your first book. Right, yeah, that'll be the yeah. first series. So, these two now, yeah. I believe the third one is going to come in the blue cover. This is actually, I don't know, I don't know what to call this. this is black and something, maybe I don't know. I don't gold. So this yeah, is gold. gold, oh, good. Yeah, the color people are already telling me. Then, I think the next one you should express something in blue color, and then the first book, I don't know what that's like. That's like my another book that is a standalone book, apart from the three series for men. And all these books are, they are on Amazon. Just you can just Google my name too, or I mean, uh, I, I wish I could check. I mean, if, if you look for me on social media, you find all these links everywhere, uh, everywhere. Now, for sure. Absolutely, and the name is Emmanuel Jason. Your dance, and yeah. the, our LinkedIn yeah. fan looking forward to having you share all this goodness with us on LinkedIn. So please don't forget yeah, the LinkedIn, LinkedIn fan. Day. Day. I share on LinkedIn every day. Yeah, I share on LinkedIn every day. Every article I publish every day, I, I share on LinkedIn. Then I share wow. my, master, my master on YouTube, which I started in February. I share everything on LinkedIn. So I, I want to think that my two, major two go to places are Facebook and LinkedIn. Then Twitter is there. I'm not so, I've not really gained traction on Twitter, but I think I'm trying. Facebook is my number one, LinkedIn number two. Then I, I don't know. Okay, well, because Facebook is linked with Instagram, right? Maybe I can put LinkedIn as number three. But I've, I've not really gained so much traction. Then Twitter is like lagging. And YouTube, I'm coming up. I'm currently pushing to get 1,000 subscribers. I'm currently at 456. Yeah. On so subscribe. Yeah, subscribe to our YouTube channels. Yeah. <laughs> Race to 1,000. Sure. I'm already exactly. subscribed to them. But yes, please subscribe. Then, thank you for that. When I saw it, I was like, wow, what's it that quote? <laughs> 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 thank you. <laughs> thank you so much that this has been fun and yes this is my way of bringing service as a tangible experience to you yeah. and thank you for loving my glasses really <laughs> yeah so nice when i finally glasses. decide to pursue a phd i'm going to i'm going to consult with you yeah. <laughs> and, and maybe i will start a school or service as a tangible experience and will also be giving masters and phd to people <laughs> Exactly. I'll be glad. I would like to be a faculty. In that and you will be in our faculty. Yeah. <laughs> sure. thank, thank you so much. I really enjoyed myself. Yeah. Like I just really enjoyed the fact that this conversation was a conversation, which is the yeah. goal. And this yeah. is service as a tangible experience. I've been talking to Professor Desuyo Emmanuel Danso, and my name is Clementina. Catch up the replay, share, please. Subscribe to his YouTube channel, and please share with us what service as a tangible, what your definition of exceptional or wow service experience is. Till we meet again with another guest next time. My name is Clementina, and from me and Professor Desuyo is bye. bye. bye Thank you. Now. God bless you. Thank, Thank you, you so everyone. Much. Amen. Yeah. Thank you.